my heart started to race, the steady rat-a-tat-tat pulsing in my ears. Nerves danced in my belly as an idea began to form. I might not be able to put a staircase in and use the upstairs for the public, but I most certainly could put it to another, more personal use. Come on, let's check out the basement. Megan left the blinds open and headed back downstairs. The thought flickered to share my idea, but I wanted to run it by Uncle Jimmy first. The last thing I needed was Megan blabbing to our parents that I was already planning on moving back out when I'd only just returned home. My sister and I were very close, but I didn't quite trust her enough to know she'd keep her mouth shut, especially when Auntie Flo's closet had no amazing storage room upstairs that would make the perfect studio apartment. Sorry, Meg, but if all went well, there would be no more waiting in the bathroom line for me. Don't worry about it, Danny. You'll be able to expand one of these days, Meg said. I'm not worried. It's all good. Everything in time. That's the spirit. When we reached the back foyer area, Megan stepped aside so I could precede her down the dank concrete steps closed in by narrow cinder block walls. She always had been afraid of the basement. Even when we were kids and played hide-and-seek in the shop with our cousins, we'd all teased her about being a coward. I started to open my mouth, give her a little ribbing for old time's sake, when my gaze caught on something that most definitely didn't belong down there. A black and red open-toed shoe lying on its side next to a pile of boxes. While a sense of urgency begged me to keep Megan away, anxiety would only allow for a squeaky, Megan, wait upstairs. What is it? She paused on the stairway behind me and squealed, high-stepping backward up the stairway. Is it a rat? Please tell me it's not a rat. I can't stand rats. It's not a rat. No rat I'd ever seen tottered around on four-inch heels, heels that were all too familiar since I'd seen them just yesterday. What is it then? A spider? Megan peered through the doorway. Be careful you don't walk into its web. I resisted the urge to slap my hands over my ears to drown out her nervous babbling. I inched closer to the shelving unit full of boxes blocking my view of what lay past the shoe. Fingertips with red painted nails stuck out into the aisle, their perfect manicure ruined by one broken nail. I swallowed the bile burning the back of my throat. Call the police, Megan. The police? Can you get rid of whatever it is yourself? If only. The hand and arm attached to the fingers came into view with my next step, and when I skirted a pile of boxes, I found the rest of Heather Teague dumped in a heap on the floor. If the wound in her chest was any indication, she wouldn't be hurling accusations my way again any time soon.'